Can psychedelics be spiritual, or are they a shortcut that hinders us in our growth? As somebody that has been on the shamanic medicine path for a few years, and someone that talks very openly about it on YouTube and social media, uh, this is a question I get a lot, um, or a statement I get a lot, is that I am, uh, I am experiencing some sort of uh, fake temporary experience of spirituality or divinity or uh, whatever it is. You're, if you're using a psychedelic to get there, it's not legitimate or it's not, um, it's not real. A lot of people feel this way. And um, for me personally, this is not something I feel because I am me and I have had these experiences and I know that they have been profoundly impactful in my life and have changed me very deeply and have shown me uh, have given me new eyes, new spiritual vision to see the world and to connect with people. I see people differently now. I see people through more a more compassionate way. And um, I do understand the perspective of like, if you're using something external, then it's uh, it's not as... It's not as, I don't know, it's not like as, uh, it's not as yours. You know what I mean? You need to meditate and you need to have these realizations on your own. I understand. But for me, this is another kind of ego trap, another mind game. There is, there is nothing uh, outside of you. For me, the whole world is the spiritual path. Psychedelics, meditation, yoga, these are all methods that we use to bring us across the water to the realization, to the island of realization. And uh, for me, the psychedelic experience is such direct, is such a direct ferry across. And um, for a culture like ours, a materialistic culture, a culture that um, that doesn't know that there's an inner world. It's not unsurprising that psychedelics are the way we connect to ourselves, to that inner world, and to the outer dimensions, if we want to use language to talk about it. But for me, it's all happening in one at once you know all these all of these places exist and we just use different methods to tap into them and the psychedelic is just the plant trance is just another avenue for us to get a glimpse into the soul whether you are meditating and focusing on your breath or you're chanting om Om, or you're doing whatever you're doing. You're praying. No matter what you are doing, it is an integral symbiotic relationship with everything around you, with nature, with the plants. You know, we talk about oneness all the time, but when it comes to things like this, we drop that. You know, oh, that's external. You're just getting high. You're just flooding your brain with chemicals and getting lost down another illusion. Do it sober. It's all ego traps. Do it sober. Do it with help. There's nothing wrong with, with, with using help that nature has provided for us. There's no accidents in the universe. There's no accidents in evolution. There are reasons that different Entities within nature give us the experiences that they give us. And uh, for me, like I was saying, if you're breathing, say you're focusing on your breath, you are breathing in what the trees are, are releasing. And the trees equally are taking in what we release. We are always in a relationship with the plants. We are always being guided with the help of the plants. So there's no difference between 
using the plants for air or using the plants for vision. These are just different methods. And uh, there's this old story of uh, this monk who was practicing this siddhi of levitation. A siddhi is like a spiritual power that you develop after intense tantra or yoga. Um, And he learned how to levitate. And the Buddha came to him and he said, Master, look what I have done. I've learned to levitate. I've learned to levitate all the way across the water. And the Buddha said, yeah, but the fairy is only a nickel. Like, why? So, there are lots of uh, really beautiful lessons and there's no uh, path of superiority in the world. All paths are valid. All spiritual paths are valid. And indigenous shamanic wisdom is just as valid as yoga, is just as valid as uh, Buddhism or the Jains or any of these sort of religions or spiritual practices that we hold up to the uh, standard of what is spirituality. These natives, these Native Americans and these shamanic traditions really were tapped into something. They understand nature and nature is not demonic. There's nothing wrong with using nature. To me, it's such a beautiful way to connect with yourself because it's a recognition that we are a part of something. I actually don't even know if you can get to some of these states through meditation. Unless you're like a, a tantra or, or like a tantric that's off in isolation somewhere and you've been fasting for a week and you've been standing in one position for that same duration. These guys are probably experiencing some deep, deep levels of consciousness, and they probably are having DMT-like experiences. But for the people that are just like going to work every day and meditating at home to relax, and like me, for example, I've been meditating for a long time. I've lived in India. I've done pranayama with masters and learned from them. And I've I've been to some really crazy, you know, you, you get to this, transcendent state of outside of your thoughts and all that but you don't get this psychedelic experience of of dimensional contact and some people say the point of spirituality is not to get lost in the different forms not to get lost in the appearances that appear to you it's about learning to identify with the thing that is seeing all these changing things. What is the eternal part in yourself that is seeing all this changing stuff? Don't get lost in the changing stuff. Don't confuse that with yourself. And I believe that. That is, that is like some ultimate spiritual position to realize. And I think on an ultimate level, at the end of the day, I recognize that everything is a reflection of myself. And physics even kind of says that it's all happening inside of our heads. Even our heads are inside of our heads. And, um, but for me, saying like, it's all an illusion, it doesn't take away the mystery of the fact that it exists. There are other worlds that we can gain access to through the plants. There are intelligences that we can speak with in the same way that I can speak with someone on the street. And uh, uh, you can't get there through meditation. And if you could, I don't think you would meditate anymore. Like when people say, oh, I have natural DMT experiences. I don't need to take DMT. I have those experiences already. It's like, oh, really? Terrence McKenna used to say, your knees don't tremble when you go to sweep up the ashram or when you go to sit down for meditation. But when you're about to drink ayahuasca or you're about to take a hit of a DMT pipe, you know what you're about to enter is real and intense and there's no not facing it. It's true. When you're in the face of something real, it doesn't require that you have beliefs. It doesn't require 
that you have to uh, touch the feet of uh, Babaji. When you're in the face of something real, it's real. It's real. And nature is something that is more tangible than dogma. And it's so ironic the way that dogma has made us switch that perspective. Dogma has made us switch our understanding of our connection to this nature, to this relationship, to the oneness. You know, it's so bizarre. We, we all talk about oneness. I mean, not all of us, obviously, but so, so many of us in the spiritual community, the new age space, we all talk about oneness. But none of us know what oneness actually means because if we did, there would be no arguments. What is there to talk about if everything is one? This is right, that's wrong. I thought it's all one. So for me, the psychedelic experience is the mystery. Well, it's not the mystery. <laughs> but it, it, it reveals to us the mystery in such a direct way. I've said this before, but whether you're a yogi from India, a rabbi from Israel, a Baptist preacher from Detroit, a shaman in the Amazon. This, the plants don't give a shit. They don't require, they don't require that you do anything. They don't require that you say Hail Mary beforehand. You might want to, but it's going to deliver itself to you regardless. It's the real spiritual practice. It's the, it's the oldest one. It's the one that works for everybody under the right circumstances and under the right context. So is the psychedelic experience a shortcut? To me, no. It's really hard work. And you spend years integrating after you've had an intense ayahuasca experience, an intense mushroom experience. Ask the people that have had these experiences. They spend forever trying to understand them. You know, you, you give God a high five and then all of a sudden you're back to where you were. And you're like, you wake up, you wake back up. You're like, what the fuck? You look down, you still have like a pair of Nikes on and you're like, you're like, I just was just with God. What am I, what, like, how do I make sense of the fact that I spent $300 on this pair of shoes? And like, what am I, wait, I'm alive. You know what I mean? I am alive. Burn everything. Throw all your things away. Give it all away. Feed the homeless. You know what, uh, something cool that Neem Karoli Baba used to say when people would ask him how to raise Kundalini? He would never say, uh, he would never say, go, uh, go meditate, go do this position of yoga. He would say, feed people. Anyways, yeah, for me, self-inquiry, inquiring into the nature of self, who am I? Neti, neti, not this, not this. You can read it in a book through the process of inquiring within yourself as Ramana Maharshi suggested or you can live it through the psychedelic. You can take the word of the teacher and hope to get there one day and maybe get glimpses of it. Or you can eat the mushroom or smoke the 5-MeO and enter samadhi and say, oh, this is real. This is already in me. And you'll have a, a legitimate starting point because you'll, you'll have this undeniable experience. And one day I'm going to go and give all these guys psychedelics, all these yogis and all these people, and I'm going to document their interpretations of the experience. I find that would be a very fascinating uh, experiment. But anyways, my name is Dakota. This is my, my uh, YouTube channel. It's called Dakota of Earth. And you can follow me on uh, here. Click the notification bells on if you want more videos on psychedelics. Uh, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Dakota Wint 
or uh, type in Dakota of Earth on TikTok. And uh, yeah, much love, you guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, no offense to anybody if you think psychedelics are the work of the devil, which I get commented every day. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Peace out. Peace and love. Peace and motherfucking love. <laughs>